Hi, I'm Miss Haley with the Huntsville Madison County Public Library. And today for our craft, I'm going to show you how to paint the super cute toucan. Here is a close up look of our toucan. And he's a more cartoony uh, toucan. I was not going for realism when I drew this guy. But he is based off of a keel build toucan. And we are going to add some details today that are not on my original. I'm going to try to improve on him a little bit today, but that is what we're going for. For this activity, you are going to need a template. I have a toucan template that you guys can trace and cut out onto cardstock or print onto cardstock, cut out and then trace. Reverse that order there. You can get this template at our website, go.hmcpl.org slash let's paint. And we'll have that link in the description box below this video as well. And this is on the very last page, this is page eight. So just print that out and cut it out. I like to use cardstock for those, but you could use regular paper. You just have to hold it down a little bit more carefully. You will also need a pencil to trace said template. A canvas, this is a five by seven inch canvas panel. You can't go any smaller than that. You could go bigger if you wanted to put your can, uh, toucan on a bigger canvas, like an eight by 10. Um, you could draw some, you could put them on a branch, draw a jungle around him, paint it, um, whatever you want. But if you're just doing the toucan the way I am have him today, you're going to need a five by seven inch canvas. You're gonna need some paper towels to keep our brushes nice and dry but damp. You're going to need a paper plate or some other thing that you can use as a paint palette. And I have already distributed my paints. Here they are. I like to use, um, I, I like to double up my paper plates. I buy super cheap ones and I find that doubling them up helps keep the paint from leaking through the other side. They will kind of leak through a little bit. So for your paints, you're going to need a smidgy smidge. If you guys can see it right there, you can barely see it on the camera of white. Just the tiniest little bit. That is for his eye dots. That is, I think, the only place I use white um, on this. You're going to need a decent amount of black. And ignore my black swoop there. There was some dunk on my black, so I just left it there. A tiny little bit of cobalt. You do not need very much, but this is cobalt hue. And again, all these um, that I use in my paint videos are always apple barrel acrylic paints. You can definitely buy fancier acrylic paints if you want, but... Um, these are super cheap and they are available at Walmart and you can get them through their pickup. If your um, Walmart store offers pickup for non-grocery items, you can get them through there. And I think most Walmarts are right now. So that's why I'm using these. They're easy to get. Red apple. Again, just a little bit of that. I put a little bit more than I used for this one because I'm going to add a detail. A Kill Build Toucan actually has a little bit of a red patch right here at the base of its chest that I want to add today. Um, some yellow. I'm using today bright yellow. If you have regular yellow, you can use that too. That is what I used originally on this toucan, um, but I don't have any, so we're using bright yellow. I don't know that there's really going to be that much of a difference. For this bright yellow, you're going to have a decent sized amount. It's really spread out. This is probably actually put that much, but it's spread out a little bit more. It's a little liquidy. Always shake your paints. And there's a little bit in my green, which that green color is crisp green. It is not quite the right color for a Kill Build Toucan Bill. This is very much like an apple-y sort of green, um, your primary sort of color green, as you guys can see right here. So you really need to add some yellow to get that more yellow green. If you have a yellow green paint, awesome, use that. But I couldn't find one, so we're, mi we're mixing it today. A little bit of blue cotton, again, that's spread out a little bit. This is for just this little patch on his bill. Um, some pumpkin orange, again, that's on his bill patch, so you only need a really small amount. Um, a little tiny bit of gray. You don't see any gray on here. That is going to be another detail we add. Um, Kill Build Toucans have these little gray triangles kind of coming off parts of their beak towards the like middle part of their beak, so we're going to add that today. And for your background, you can really use any color you want, but I am using my tried and true Key West. That is probably my favorite um, color to use for backgrounds. It blends really well and it's just pretty. I like that color. And lavender sachet for some depth. If you were doing sort of a jungly scene, if you were doing it on a bigger one, 
I might go with Key West and use some lime green if you have it, some crisp green with a yellow or if you have a lime green. I might do that instead for like a jungly background, but it's up to you. You could also do kind of a sunset thing, do a little pink. Um, that's up to you to play with however you want your background to look. But there is our paints explained and we're gonna set this aside. You are also going to need, I had so many paints, I didn't have room for this on my camera at first, a cup of water. I like to fill mine halfway. That way if I spill it, it's less of a big deal than if it was full. Still kind of a big deal, but you know. Um, I have a wide flat brush. This one is about one inch wide. Um, I don't know how much we'll use that, probably just for the background today. This is a pretty small painting, um, but I might use that on the background. I may not. I have a very tiny detail brush. You guys can barely even see that. Um, I have a larger, sort of just normal brush. This is, this is a pretty basic brush. Um, there's a size comparison. And I also have today a thin flat brush. This is maybe a quarter inch wide um, because I think that might help me fill in. I like, I like a wide flat brush to fill in the bigger spaces, but the big one is probably too big for this guy because some of those spaces are small. So that's what we're doing. I'm going to mop up some of this water that I've gotten everywhere and we're going to set this guy aside so we don't get it anywhere I don't want it. We'll prop up our inspiration picture. Ooh, he's out of the camera. There we go. Inspiration picture. And we're gonna go ahead and get started. So, always keep your brushes in your water when you're not using them. It keeps them damp, it keeps the paint from drying on there, it helps not ruin your brushes. Um, I'm using super cheap brushes that we have at the library, so you don't need expensive brushes to paint, but um, you still don't wanna ruin them. So the very first step is to take your canvas, place your toucan on there, make sure he's lined up. He he covers most of the canvas. You're only gonna have like a tiny little smidgen of room on any given side of your canvas. And you're gonna trace him. And when you're tracing him, you're going to go very gently. I like to hold when I'm wanting to be gentle with my pencil. When we write, we tend to hold it right up here and choke down on it. But when I am wanting to be gentle, I hold my pencil way back, like towards the bottom, kind of in the middle for tracing. And you're just going to very hold it down with one hand and just very gently trace along. I've already traced, so I'm not going to actually trace a lot. Trace along there. You don't want a super dark line on this. We're using mostly light colors other than the black. So if you have a really dark line, it's going to be harder to cover up on this. Usually acrylics cover that really well. But on this one, try to be a little bit lighter when you're tracing. And just trace all the way around. When you need to move, like say you're coming down here, just shift your hand. Don't actually lift. Just shift your hand a little bit and move around as you need to. But if you always have it pressed down, you're not gonna move. So once you are traced, there's my traced guy. We are gonna start on the background or do I wanna do the yellow first? The yellow is almost certainly going to need two coats and you want to get those in before you do the black because you do not, it's very easy to drag black into this and you don't wanna do that. So, I think we might do the yellow first. We're actually going to draw a couple lines on here. So where his, see that? Where his bill ends, so right here you're just gonna draw, and again I'm choking back on that pencil way far back, so it's a super light touch. You just draw a line right there. Um, I'm not gonna draw his, well, maybe I will. I don't know that I wanna paint that yellow. So we're gonna draw, starting right about here. Coming pretty far back. We're gonna curve that down. This is just where his black is gonna be. Gonna bump out a little bit and curve back in. Just a hair. And we're gonna curve all the way down and around to right about here. Ooh, that's probably that's probably darker than I wanted, but that's okay. That's where the black is going to be. That's pretty good. 
So his eye, then I'm going to go ahead and put in his eye. I'm going to have a black, I'm going to go ahead and do a band. That's where his black band is going to be. And then I am going to put in his eye. I'm not going to put in all of his eye, I'm just going to do the big circle. So where the cobalt is, and I'm going to do it super duper light, because the cobalt, I think, will cover it, but sometimes it needs a second coat, and um, I'd rather not. So just pick where you want your eye to be and draw it in that circle. Because in this case, I don't think we want to paint over it yellow. Usually I just paint the whole thing and then paint over it. Um, but because I'm going to have to do so many yellow coats, I don't know that I want to do that this time. So there is our toucan. If you want, you can add the little bits of his beak. So sort of that shape for the end curved here and then it inverts and then sort of a blue going a little wider I did a big wide one on him but some of the toucans have it longer and then the orange kind of comes out to here tapers in I'm doing super light strokes I don't even know if you can see that but it's super light if you're going to draw that in. Um, do it super, super light because those are very light colors there and you, you don't want to have to worry about covering it later. So once you have everything traced, we are going to go ahead. Usually I start on my background. I'm kind of torn about it because I want to start on my background. It's deeply ingrained in me, but I also want this yellow to dry. So we're actually going to start with the yellow. So I'm going to take my... slightly less wide flat brush, so the quarter inch flat brush, and we're going to use the yellow. I'm going to go in, I'm going to be pretty careful to adhere to the edge here, just because I don't want to have to tidy that up with the background. Um, I'm going to be very careful with that background color. I am, even though I'm going to add some red there, red is going to go over yellow so easy. Um, I'm going to Go ahead and paint all the way down there. And we're just keep filling in. If you've painted with me before, you know I like to set my brush down away from the line and then move it up towards it and then drag along that line to get nice crisp lines and the other way. I'm going to super worry about keeping to the circle line. If I go over a little bit, that's fine. I do think the blue will cover it pretty well as long as the yellow is dry. Um, and I can totally see that line through that yellow. <laughs> so the yellow is never going to really cover up that dark line. You have to get so much yellow on there to cover that up. Switch hands here. And if you go over this line here, where it butts up to the black, so does not matter. You can be super sloppy messy right there if you wanted to be. I wouldn't glob it on, but if you went over, it's not the end of the world because you're gonna paint that black and the black will go over yellow so easy. You do not even have to worry about that. So. In fact, I am just going to go over that line there because it's easier. All right. That is our first coat of yellow done. I'm just kind of spreading it out, making sure there's no globs because I really super duper 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 want this to be dry fairly quick because I'm going to have to do a second coat. If you guys can tell, you can really see the white of the canvas through that yellow still. It's not a super solid color um, and it'll turn out really patchy if I don't do a second coat. This one was done with yellow paint rather than bright yellow. And it was a very thin yellow and you can even see how patchy it is, um, even with a second coat. So just be aware of that. So that's what we're gonna start with. Next, we are going to do our background. So we just need to be careful of this edge here. Um, that's why I started down there. I hope you guys started down there, um, was so that that would dry quickest so that I could get to my background. For the background, I'm gonna take out my big flat brush 
you know, brush some water off of it on the edge of the cup and then dry it off on the towel. And when I say dry it off, I'm just really pressing out the water. Um, it is still damp and you can kind of shape it when it's damp, but it is still damp, but you don't want it wet because then you'll get water in your paint and you'll, your paint will get runny. So for the background, I'm using the Key West. So this color and the lavender, and I am just going to go take some Key West. Oh, I did not want it right there. I'm going to fling my paint. Let me just wipe that real quick. Fortunately, I think my other colors will cover that. Spread that. So I'm just going to go in without flinging paint and put some dabs of this Key West all over my canvas background area. Go ahead and get close to his head right here. And then down here where there's just not much room. Down here you, again, don't really have to worry if you go over that line because you're going to paint it black and black covers pretty much all your sins. Kind of ironic. Get my edge. All right, so now I'm gonna go in with purple. I'm not gonna to bother to rinse my brush between these colors. And I'm gonna dab that around wherever I feel like it. Lots of different places. Okay. And I'm just going to start painting. And I'm going to let them blend together when I reach the other colors. I'm not super worried if they over blend. I'm going to make sure I don't get... I'm kind of moving in one direction. If you guys can tell, I'm moving in one sort of diagonal, except when I'm maybe at the lines, and then I go in a diagonal. And I'll probably come in with a little bit more Key West right here, because this is turning out a little more purple than I maybe want him to be. Again, I'm kind of just pressing, coming up to that line, and then dragging my brush around. Really being careful right there. Just right there. And then I will take that. Same thing over here. I'm going to spread that paint out that I've dogged on there, letting it blend however it turns out to blend. This is a pretty organic sort of blending. I'm not worrying about it. I'm not making a certain way. I'm going to come down here a little bit with some purple. If you come to a spot that's a little dry, just get a little more paint on your brush. These have kind of dried a little bit. Totally blocking the view with my arm, aren't I? Let me switch hands. And here I'm almost just setting my brush on there. Ooh, I just totally went over it. That's okay, that's gonna be red. Scrape that a little bit. All right, so there's my background. I definitely went over the edge here, but that's okay. I'm gonna come in with a little bit more of the green on top. I do want him to be a little more green than he is right now. Especially right over here. This has got really purple over here. Alright, there we go. 
That is our background. And is my yellow dry? My yellow is pretty dry. I'm going to go ahead and go over my yellow with another coat. So we're going to take our small flat brush again, dry it off. Get some yellow and go back over. Just be careful when you're, since we just did the background, I'm going to come over here last because it's pretty wet right there. Not to accidentally drag your background color into your yellow. This may even need, oh, this may need a third coat. The yellow is very light of a color. So we'll see. We may not. Again, you don't have to be super careful with that edge that's going to be painted black. The only way, place now that you need to be really careful is right here along this edge. I do not want to drag any of that teal into my bird. There we go. Let that dry. See if he needs another. Hopefully not. Now... Dry. That's the hard part about working with a smaller canvas like this is that when you're working with a big canvas you have so much space that when you're done with one part the other part is dry. Um, but unfortunately here he's still pretty wet around my beak so I'm just going to have to be very careful and that is okay. We're going to start with the base green color. Because out of those, I feel like that is probably the lightest that is going to be the hardest to cover up. The blue might be um, harder to cover something with. It's easy to cover the blue. Um, but we're going to go with the green. And ooh, that is still really apple green. So I'm going to take some yellow paint. And add that until I have more of a yellow-green color. So I'm going to add a little bit more yellow. So at this point, that is half and half. That's half yellow, half of that green at this point. And I still think it's really... I think I want more yellow. So now we have slightly more yellow than we did green. There we go, that's getting there. That's closer to what I want. Still a little bright. Could add some white. This white is really crusty and gross. But we're gonna do it. I'll do it for you guys. Just gonna add Tiniest loop of light just to pale that a little bit. It's still a little dark in my opinion, but I think I have the right tone. There we go. So that was just a little dot of white. Normally I would just take from my white on my palette and add it, but I have not used it yet. That's the very last step, and I don't want to taint it accidentally with a dirty brush. So and I'm a little clumsy today, but I think I would. Again, when you're mixing, you want to mix in rather than out, you're gonna spread out a little bit no matter what, I've definitely spread out here, but the more you mix in, the better, because you'll paint your palette less. So we're gonna come in with the green. I'm gonna be somewhat careful not to go over the lines I drew in here. I'm not gonna super worry about it. I do think I can cover it, but especially around the blue area, I don't really want to have to cover it. I should say. Here I don't have to worry because that's going to be a black line. And this background has dried a little bit, thank goodness. Mm 
continue along and avoiding going over the lines here as much as I can. It's not, like I said, the end of the world if you do, but on this, those colors are harder to cover each other up. So if you can avoid it, I would. And again, you wanna avoid pulling in any of your background color, although mine is pretty much dry now. I was worried about it a minute ago, but this has dried. And that might need another coat too. Ooh, all these white colors. Just let it dry for a second. I'm gonna go ahead and go on in with that second coat if I can get it sort of dry. Glop it on a little bit. So toucans come in a lot of different varieties. Not all have this kind of beak. Um, you may have seen a different kind of toucan. Some have more of a yellow beak with just some red on it. Um, it's almost like a yellow orange. It's very bright. It's almost glowing. And others have really dark bills. But they actually really need their bills. Their bills help them cool off. The bill is a very important, it's not just their mouth, it's very important to their physiology in their body. The toucans are just really cool birds. All right, there we go, more or less. I'm gonna have some brush strokes in there, but that's okay, he's a cartoony, cartoony toucan. All right, we're gonna let that dry, I think. I don't think my yellow needs another coat, so I think we're good there. We're gonna let that dry, and I think I'm gonna do my blue next because it's dry enough around that edge that I think I can do it. I'm gonna go in with a smaller brush this time um, rather than my flat brush. I'm gonna go in with my, not my really small detailed brush, but this one. And we're gonna do the blue right here. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And on some birds, and just on the keel bill itself, the their beak color can really vary in terms of like placement. I mean, they're in the same general areas, but the um, the blue can be smaller, it can be bigger, it can be really solid looking. Sometimes it almost looks like it's brushed over the green, like you can see some of the, the green bill through it. Just depends. But on mine, he's going to be solid. That is easier. <laughs> Ooh, I'm shaking. That's not great. All right, and now we're going to go in, I guess with the red. The red might need two coats if it's thin. Sometimes red paint um, in this brand can be really thin. Um, we need second coat. So if we need a second coat, I want to go ahead and get that red on here. Especially since my background's dry there now. So I'm going to come right here. Just very carefully go over the screen. I don't really want to pull any in. It'll turn brown if I do. This is not the color we're going for here. Curve that beak around. I painted over the beak here a little bit, so I'm painting back over the blue. I may need another coat there just so it doesn't look purple through the red, because red and blue make purple. So unless your coat's thicker there, you may have to do a second coat there. And the more detail I have to put in, the quieter I get. So they get in that little corner. I turned my brush. My brush is wider this way than it is that way on the point. 
um, just the way I've shaped the point there. So I turned it so I could get in there better. I'm just very shaky this morning. I don't know that it needs a second coat. It is a little darker on the edge, but I don't know that I mind. Ooh, maybe I do mind. <laughs> we'll just see. We'll let that dry a little bit. And now we're going to go in with the orange on his beak. And again, I've um, dried my brush off, but I'm making sure to shape it into like a point and that way I can get in there with a smaller details without having to pull out my detail brush, which I'd rather not have to do. So we're going in with the orange. I'm going to start in the middle. I never start towards the edge. I always start towards the middle and work my way into the edge. It gives you a chance to adjust a little bit. And do the edge right here. Now this may definitely need a second coat to cover that splotch of background color that I accidentally spilled on here earlier. Most of it wound up on the orange bit. Oh, you know, if I put it on just a little thicker than I am right now, maybe I won't need to. Again, right here, I don't really want to pull the green into the orange because that would be kind of a brownish color. So I'm going to go in with a little bit more, lay it on a little thicker. Right there. And always, if you feel like yours is showing through a little bit, like I will probably go back over most of these with a second coat off camera, because I don't want to have to sit here and let you wait with me while paint dries. Um, literally watching paint dry. How boring. Um, but that orange, you can see that showing through, that orange definitely is going to need a second coat, but that might happen off camera. Depending, it may be dry by the time we get done with black. I am going to go ahead in with another coat on my red because it is dry enough that I can add another coat. When you are judging dryness, you want it to be dry enough that you're not accidentally going to just move paint around and just the other side of tacky. So when it's partially dry, it'll be a little sticky and you want it just a little more dry than that. Because if you put it on when it's still a little tacky, you're actually gonna pull up the paint and you'll get like really splotchy patches. Um, I don't like that. Spreading it out a little bit so that my brush strokes, which are probably going to be visible, are at least in a good direction with the beak. Dry off my brush. We're gonna wait on the black there because the green is still very much drying. But we are going to go in now, I think, with a blue around the eye. That is mostly dry. And I am going to paint the entire circle blue because black can go on top of that blue. Um, and that will be easier than trying to just do a ring. So we're gonna get some blue on there, go in on the center and then brush it out and just come up to the edge and go around. And it's a little thin in the center and a little thick on the edge, but that's okay. I like that. It gives a little bit more realism and depth to that eye when you do it that way. Um, and also the center is going to get a little black too. So if it's really thin in the center, it doesn't super matter. I'm going to cover it. 
All right, but now we are gonna go in with our black on the back part of the body. Do you wanna do red first? I'm gonna actually do red first. I'm gonna do a little bit of red down here. I almost forgot. We're gonna take my round brush, the one that's round and pointy, and get a little bit of red on there. I'm just going to go very thin right here over the yellow, not really in the black area, and then to a thicker area right there. And then bring it up a little bit more. Tapered and the point. Like that. They just have this little red patch. It's almost maroon because it's blending in with the black a little bit. But we'll see what it looks like with the black up against it. So now we're going to go in with my flat, small brush, the quarter inch. Dry it off really good, shape it if it needs it. And we're gonna go in with the black on the back side. So we're gonna leave that black stripe to the last, um, second to last-ish time um, because that is still pretty wet around that area. We're gonna start up here. With the black, you do need to be careful of your lines. I think that probably goes without saying, but just in case. You cannot cover black back up, really. You could eventually. But it would take so many coats. If you go over your line a little bit with the black, just change the direction of the line. <laughs> is, is really the better thing to do there. I'm going on, I'm keeping my brush angled up a little bit so that I don't set the flat bit on. I'm really only just using the edge. And same thing right there. Same thing right there. Because that's such a small little area right there, you don't want to be very, very, very easy to go over the edge with that. All right, so here I kind of have to find my edge again because I covered it up and I, whoa, too much. I covered it up so well that I can no longer see it. And we can carve that back out. And we're gonna, since I went over the edge, I don't know if you guys can see that right up there. Yeah, you can. Where I went over the edge a little bit, because it's easier to just change the line than to go over black, I'm just going to bring his little head out a little bit more to meet that, like that. That is way easier to fix it that way than to try to change um, the fact that there was black there to begin with. very carefully along the edge I'm coming up to it again and then I'm sliding my brush along I really came in on here let's see I'm gonna have to reference okay so it goes all the way down here really painted over it there so on this one I am definitely doing my edges first and defining those With the black before I paint the insides. A lot of times I'll do an edge and then I'll paint around and I'll, I'll kind of paint the inside as I go. But on this, it's a little easier if you go ahead and define those edges. Take some of the stress away. With getting those edges done. What I was doing there when I flicked it, I had a little too much built up on my brush. So I was just 
getting the paint off in a place where I can smooth it out later and actually use it rather than wiping it off. Now that my edges are done, I can fill in without having to worry too much. I do have to be careful not to like go crazy, but you do want to make sure you're getting a thick coat. You don't want any white specks going through. This is a textured canvas. Most of them have some texture and sometimes that means the white can show through in spots if you have not done a thick enough coat. Not that you want to like glue bob it on there, but you do want a thick coat. Smooth out that edge a little bit. There we go. So, that is still drying, so I can't really do the inner beak line yet, and I can't really do the gray. Still not sure if I want to do the gray. So we are going to come and do his little black stripe here. I am going to wipe a little black off my brush and just get it on the tip so that I can come just along here. And I'm going to use my detail brush to get that last little bit because that is teeny. So I'm going to pull this out, get a little of that just on the end, just barely, if you guys can see that, just barely on the end there, and come in and get this last little bit. Just wipe those down to just a little bit, right there. And that is too small to do with anything other than a detail brush. Okay. I really, really need your beak to dry, buddy. Dry. We're going to go in, I think, with the black. I'm not super concerned about the fact that his eye isn't dry. Maybe. Maybe I am concerned. We're going to use our larger round brush. See around it's like a tapered brush this guy and we're gonna get some black on the end of him we're gonna get kind of a glob what I'm going to do is I'm gonna lay it on there rather than paint it on there I'm gonna set it on there so I'm gonna glob and I'm gonna set and drag a little bit There's a lot of paint here, but that is going to keep me from painting in the blue. So the blue is not going to dilute the black any since it's not dry. It's partially dry. It's not dry enough that the blue wouldn't mix. So when you've got that problem and you're just impatient, get a lot on there. And just kind of set it, kind of patting it into the canvas. Now, when you do that, it's going to be globbed on. So that is really not going to dry for a while. So just be aware of that. Don't touch it. Don't move it. Um, be aware. We're going to do the same thing with the white. We're just going to lay the white into it. Um, I've never seen somebody like decorate cookies where they flood the cookie and then they put more color on top of it in a different color. It's kind of like that. So same brush. We're going to get a glob of white on the end. Big old glob, not quite as big of a glob as we had with the black, but a glob. We're just gonna go boop, right there. Make sure there's no black on there. If there's no black, you can use it again. And we're gonna do another small one right here. 
like that. I did more of a drag there on that one, but because I'm working with wet um, paint, I'm not going to do that. And I actually think I like it better without the drag. So we're just dropping that color on top of it. And we're done with that. So now we are going to take our small detail brush, wipe it off, get it nice and pointy, very, very pointy. We're going to do our beak line. I'm actually going to come this way. I'm a little drier over here. So we're going to come right up to his face almost. Oh, that's wet. Why is that wet? Let me do that same setting it down method because there's a little wetness right there. I don't know if I dropped water or if that orange paint is just really run, runny. I was not expecting that. And I'm getting a little thinner as I go. I'm going to thicken up that back end since it wound up thicker there. But I'm trying to thin it down a little bit as I go. Go to the tip of his beak. We're gonna thicken up the second a little, like that. This is his beak. So now we are going to try with the detail brush to add some gray triangles. I'm just getting a little gray paint. I'm not going to go anywhere where it's wet, but we're going to add those gray markings with his bill. They're just these little triangle shapes, almost like a sawtooth pattern. I wonder if that's supposed to look like toothiness to scare off predators or something. Not really too many. Like that. Oop, that's not pointy at all. Let me make that a little pointy. There we go. Like that. And now we have our toucan. It's all done. I'm going to hold him up just a little bit. I don't want my black to run because it is so much. But there is our toucan. And he's all finished. And I hope you guys had fun painting him. He took a while for something so small, right? Because there's so many details. But he's pretty cute. You guys can name him. Mine is going to be named Ted. I don't know why. I just like it. His, his name is Ted. And I would love to see what you guys made. I'd love to see your toucans, what kind of toucans you made. And their toucan is like. So I'm sure yours is a little different than mine. Mine two are very different from each other. And I would love to see them. You can send them to us at our Facebook, which is Huntsville Madison County Public Library. Or you can email them to me directly at my library. I'm at the Eleanor Murphy branch. And our email is Murphy, M-U-R-P-H-Y, Murphy, at hmcpl.org. Those are our initials, in case you're wondering. And we'd love to hear from you. Thank you.